Hello and welcome to Daily Politics on Trust TV. On this program, we discuss issues around politics, policy and governance. I am Hamza Idris. As you know, today is Friday. It's the day when you, our esteemed viewers, can call to share your contributions, questions, comments and concerns on major issues in the polity. And on the program today, we'll be looking at the report submitted by the National Livestock Reform Committee led by the chairman of the All Progressive Congress, Abdullahi Umar Ganduji which has made a recommendation for the establishment of a Ministry of Livestock as part of efforts to address harder farmers' clashes, as well as modernize and improve livestock production in Nigeria. The team presented its report to President Bola Ahmed Tinubu in Abuja on Thursday. Responding, President Tinubu says the report is the panacea to the issues and conflicts between farmers and pastoralists in the country. Have a look. The age-long conflict between herders and farmers in Nigeria has resulted in the loss of lives and livelihood and has created a subversive security situation in the country. It has also resulted in low productivity from the sector, making Nigeria an import-dependent economy and draining scarce foreign reserves used for importing dairy, meat and other livestock products. The President is convinced that the inability to... He says the federal government under his watch is ready to take drastic steps to solve the problem in line with recommendations in the report. To acquire land for ranches and livestock development. You pay for the land if you don't want to give us free, if you don't want to participate. Imagine you create this opportunity. It's a life saving opportunity that we have. The APC national chairman says not all herdsmen are responsible for conflicts along grazing routes. Has men from the northern part of this country moving to the central Nigeria, down to the southern part of Nigeria? creating problems along the routes and the other is transhuman has men coming from west africa down to northern part of nigeria down to the middle belt down to the southern part of nigeria creating a lot of problems along the route on the other hand experts on the committee insist that the old herding customs must be reformed those who are into cattle business in the traditional format are also human beings. They need to be addressed. But the panacea is we need to migrate, transist from this migratory tendency to you know ranching, mini ranching that support system can can address. The livestock reform committee reviewed and analyzed varied experiences across the world to come up with practical recommendations for reforming the industry at all levels. There are clear strategies outlined devoid of any political, ethnic or religious biases, but strictly aimed at guiding federal, state and local government administrations on how best to promote the industry, enhance the quality of lives of citizens and promote peaceful coexistence and social harmony. From State House Abuja, Kainde Amodu, Trust TV News. Of course, today is Friday, as we said earlier. It is your day. You can feel free and call so that you share your thoughts on this all-important matter. But before now, before then, I mean, we now have in the studio Adamula Toro. He is the Director of Strategic Planning, Beate Allah Katil Bridges Association of Nigeria, MACPAN. Welcome to the program, Maladam. Thank you very much. Yes, we're happy having you. You've seen our topic of the day, Ministry of Livestock. Is this a new thing i mean is it a reminder to the president or oh, you 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 have made an effort towards having this in the course of your conversation over the years uh let us understand one thing when we talk about livestock we are talking about 37 point about 37 percent of the gdp of agriculture the livestock sector in the livestock sector 
And this is an area that has a very vibe, that is supposed to have a very vibrant value chain. And talking about livestock, you see the, the, there has been a lot of misconception in this country. People tend to associate livestock and value chain to the Fulbe people. Uh, look at the, 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 the value chain of milk, look at the value chain of beef, look at the value chain of so many things. I mean, this, this is a, a trillionaire business that needs a lot of investment. Government has invested a lot of money in transforming agriculture and transforming uh, agronomy. But very little has been done to transform the livestock sector. And the question is why? Why the, I don't you care. See, sometimes we, we tend to believe that lumping livestock with agriculture, it looks like so much attention is being given to agronomy. And very little. If you look at within the states, even the federal and the states, look at their budgetary allocation, yearly budgetary allocations. How much do they allocate for livestock? And you see, we have opportunities that has been coming and going that will give us a chance to transform the livestock production itself. There are so many now new techniques. Our, our cows, instead of somebody driving maybe 200 cows, you can have 20 cows that can give you value that your 200 cows will not give you. 20. 20. For instance, what is the uh, productive capacity of our ordinary cows? Maybe two, two, three liters. But we are now having cows that can give you 12 up to 20 liters. And what is the value of a liter of milk? Minimum of 300. Go to buy yogurt one liter. How much are we now buying it? 2,000. 2,000 naira. Mm. So these are all opportunities now that we have that we need to transform the whole livestock production system. And it cannot be, it cannot, we don't believe that it can be, it can be improved when you, when they are lumped together with agri with, with agri ministry. So you are more or less saying it's a welcome development to have a um, livestock ministry? It's long overdue. Then have you been sleeping, McBan, that uh, the Ganduja led livestock transformation uh, reform committee uh, is the one to make this request or oh, you have made similar requests we have made similar requests because and and we were also part of this uh the seminar that brought out the recommendations okay we were also part of it we were carried along so you're uh, part of the reform team we are, we, yes we are part of the reform team and let me tell you you see we are having if for instance if you are to transform the livestock sector you are going to have research institutes for milk you can have research institutes for beef you can have research institutes for food production and which means that you are expanding the job opportunities of young nigerians who wants to be professionals in those fields and apart from that you see uh, how much does the federal government spend on milk every year importation we, there is no we nigeria has no business importing milk if we can, if say we can do the, the collection, we can organize. Let me give you an example. The LNZ in Kano, mm. it pays a certain amount of money for collection milk in the morning from herders who are around. And because of that, in, and it encourages, it says, if you now enroll your child, they will give you additional 20 naira. And because of that, so many herders have settled down and because they are getting value. You see, the problem of moving... They have off-takers. They have off-takers. And we need to develop all these sectors. When you, look, in the value chain of livestock, you have the abattoirs, you have the, transpo you have the transporters, you have the, veterinary, you, you have the veterinary people, you have the food production. Look at, for instance, the amount of money you will make in transportation. Those who are, who are the butchers, Look at the, so we need to develop all the sectors like we have developed in the agronomy. Then in which way will the creation of this ministry help in reducing farmer hazard crisis? This is one. And secondly, many are saying we have so many ministries, so many agencies. Is this not going to be a duplication? 
No, you see, farmer, farmer had a conflict. You now have a ministry that will look strictly as to what are the causes of the conflicts. Let me, let me give you an example. The northern states have been battling with desertification. As a result of desertification, it means that the, 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 the fodder you now get is no longer there. You will have to move because people will have to, it is a survival. They will have to survive and therefore they will have to move. And the grazing reserves have not been taken care of. They have not been receded. The, the, the dams within the grazing reserves has silted and nobody is doing anything about it. And look at climate change. Okay, take the case before a number of uh, herders who used to go to the shores of Lake Chad in the dry season. The Lake Chad, the Lake Chad has shrunk mm. by about 70 something percent. Yeah, so when we say it is only 5% of the original size that is there. Absolutely. So which means that, you know, and it was, if they go there, they are in the fodder, they are in the water. And then the shrinkage and the insurgency means that they can no longer go to those areas. And because of also the climate change, the, it, the, these places are not hospitable at all. And these are people who want to survive. And this is all that they know. And over the years, there were opportunities for government to intervene positively. For instance, during the Rendi Pest, when a number of them lost a large percentage of their heads, this was an opportunity for the government to say, OK, fine, we are now introducing new models. Now let's start giving new breeds to these people and let us see how it works. We now can now see for individuals who are now investing in livestock, we can see the difference it is making. Because people are now planting their own grasses that is making a lot of difference in what they now, the, the, the amounts of money they get. Look at the Sebore farm in, in, in Adamawa. Look at the kind of cooperative it has created. And look at the amount of money people are making. If you subscribe to the cooperative, they offtake your milk. And every month, you find that you have an income of about, if you just have only five cows, you have an income of about 200,000. So these are, these are all opportunities that we need to rethink. And now see, because you cannot rethink until you also involve the stakeholders, create an institution that will now help in organizing these reforms you want to do. If you check the social media, especially immediately after the Ganduja committee submitted the recommendation. The news there is that Tinubu is going to give undue advantage to, to the Fulani by maybe saying, okay, even though he didn't give direct commitment, but from his body language, most likely the ministry will come, that it's going to be for Fulani. What will you say on this? No, I, you see, it is ignorance. How many people are involved in the value chain of, if for instance, the number of cows that are slaughtered in Lagos alone is more than all the cows that are maybe slaughtered in northern Nigeria. Lagos alone? In Lagos alone. Look at the people that are employed in the transportation. Look at the butchers who are involved in that. Are they Fulanis? Are they all Fulanis? So you see the question of stereotyping an ethnic group or trying to say that it is the Fulani that are, it's just a mistake. Everybody eats meat. You need, you, 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 you need the skin. It's a big business. If you have the, the, the bones and whatever, it's a big business itself. So it is a misunderstanding for people to think. In fact, the Fulanis don't make, the people who make the profits are not the Fulani. The Fulani only just, maybe they take care of the cattle and they sell. But those who make the, are the butchers. And those who are involved in the transportation. The middlemen. The middlemen. They are the biggest. What Lagos earns from all oh, these other states earns from this? No other state earns from it. Look at the taxes. Every cow you take there, how much are you paying? So it is. It is. It's time for us to look at it as a business because livestock is a big, a multi-trillion naira business in this country that involves. It is not for the Fulani. It is not for the Hausa man. It is not for the. Everybody is involved in it. So the earlier we stop looking at it as if as a business of only one ethnic group, the better for us, so that we can develop this sector. Look, 
we, 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 we are training veterinarians. Look at the drugs that go with it. Is this all controlled by the Fulanis? Or is it the Fulanis that we are only training in all these areas? Thank you for helping me to ask our viewers these pertinent questions. Yes, viewers, the line is now open. Please call the number displayed on your screen to share your questions, comments, and concerns on the matter. And also, please refrain from using abusive or offensive language when sharing your opinion. Yeah. That is it. So while we await the, the call from our mm. viewers to give us their, their thought on this all important matter, something is happening right now in Plateau State, you know, about sharing support for, for you know, victims of Fama Hada crisis. Or is it not Fama Hada crisis, you know, in Mongu, in Barikiladi, and all that. The wife of the president was there. She donated 500 million. But today, Magban in Plato has issued a statement saying not one member was included in that. What would you say on this? What I will say is that, you see, the, uh, those who have the responsibility to govern us have failed to rise above certain, whether religious or ethnic sentiments. It is a record. All kind of ethnic groups are involved or have lost one year, one or the other. Look at the number of cows that have been rustled within all these areas. Now, how can you now say you are going to give some kind of support and you don't look beyond one ethnic group? I think that is a disservice to this country. And I'm very disappointed with those who were charged with bringing out the, the list of those who were affected by this crisis. Now, do we now say that Maybe you know how someone has, has lost something. No Fulani man has lost anything. I think it is the level of our governance and our pettiness that we are displaying. And uh, the earlier we go beyond this and understand that in governance, those who are charged in the responsibility of administering us must raise up their game because it does not do anybody any good. We are our brother's keepers. These communities have lived for a very long time. So, I mean, if you are going to, somebody who lost everything that he has in terms of his livestock, and now and he, his loved ones have been killed, and you are saying, no, he doesn't exist, then it means that you are pushing the boundaries of compassion. Hmm. I, I recall that in November, we, we hosted the chairman, national chairman of Makban, Baba Gezerma. He said herders have not been compensated even once, despite the losses. But it's like we have a first call here. Yeah. Mm. yeah, we have a caller from Kaduna. Okay, Mikhail, welcome to the program, Mikhail. Yes, how are you? Good evening. Fine, welcome to the program. And what is your contribution? My contribution is about this, the program going on now on farmer harder slash Nigeria. Mm. Okay, go ahead. Hello. Go ahead, Mikhail. Uh, yes, sir. I'm calling from Karuna, sir. Good yes, I, I know. Go ahead. Let me hear your thought. Sir. Yes, yes sir. Sir, sir with, the current, with the current situation now, is better. I want to just... I, I, Yeah, it's like uh, we've lost Mikhail. Try and call back Mikhail. Thank you. Yes. Let me, let me give you an example. Mm. In 1973, there was a drought. And a uh, substantial number of herders lost part of their hearts. Not sorry, not even take this and maybe as, as a palliative. 1973. 1973 this drought. Is 50 years. Yes. And there was, in 1983, there was this Rindepes Rinde outbreak. There's so many people lost. Who was given anything? That was 10 years after. 10 years. And look at the industrial scale of cattle rustling. Somebody who had maybe 300 cows and overnight he lost everything. And not even a sorry. And we now see every day, if for whatever reason, a market, a market goes on fire, we find that the governor is running helter-skelter. 
to give some kind of support to those who have lost something. Are these people not Nigerians? Okay. We have Hassan from Kaduna. Let's hear from him. Uh, welcome to the program, Hassan. Thank you. Welcome. Good afternoon. Uh, good, good evening. Sorry. Yeah. What are your thoughts, Hassan? Uh, my thought is that uh, this uh, idea of creating a livestock ministry, I was thinking that uh, in as much as we have Ministry of Agri, can that be a department? Okay, this is a so question. My thought is that uh, I'm suggesting if that could be uh, created as a department in the Ministry of Agriculture. Okay. Because having multiple uh, ministries, maybe that cannot be able to solve the problem, but I think it should be, it should be a department in the Ministry of Agriculture. Okay, thank you, Hassan. Yes. Yeah, okay. Yes. You are Hassan you see, you see can't, that, uh, can't the livestock be a department? Uh? It can be. But it has been a department before. What did we get out of it? And there are so many multiple issues around livestock that we could see that the ministry could not handle, even in the budgeting process. Mm. Now, uh, you see, you need to go uh, the whole, the world over. If you look at the way livestock is taken, we need to take it to the next level. It is a very big... Just like uh, the uh, president has taken it absolutely. to the next level, the Minister of Petroleum Resources, for instance. Absolutely. We or transportation and blue economy. Absolutely. We need to take okay. it to the next level because it's potential to create, you know, a lot of jobs. And, uh, you know, and not these ordinary jobs. Mm. Value jobs for okay. our young men. Okay. Yeah. You know, we so have Mohamed Gerber from Bauchi. Yes. Yeah, hold your thoughts. My lad, I will come back to you. Yes, Mohamed Gerber. Good evening. Yes, well Good evening. Yeah, welcome to the program and what are your thoughts? Thank you very much. I think it is quite a good uh, move for the government to establish or to create livestock ministry. Yes, hello. Good evening. We can hear you. Go ahead. Okay, yes. What I'm saying is I think it is a good move uh, for the government to create a livestock ministry. But the most important thing we should note is not only creating the ministry, but rather, I think, the commitment from the government to establish uh, policies and programs that will definitely address the issues uh, that pertain to livestock uh, production in Nigeria, particularly the issue of this harder farmer uh, 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 conflict. I think it's very important, not only creating the ministry, but the government to show its commitment in solving this problem. I think it's very important. And then on the other hand, I think uh, my Fulani uh, brethren should be able to understand his life is dynamic. And definitely we have to change. We have to look at the present situation, the global situation, the issue of climate change, and many other issues that we have to shift to, to from the current uh, the trends of livestock rearing to at least an advanced stage. But we need to have a commitment from the government for us to do all these things. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Mohamed Garba from Bauchi. You, you heard him. He said, beyond creating the ministry, there must be commitment. Have you, have you perused um, the renewed hope of the president and uh, is there anything that you think has direct <laughs> impact to the, the full bay well uh, you see I, I am very skeptical with some of the policies of government especially towards agriculture for instance it is the priority of this administration that says now uh, one of his priorities is increasing the land area for agriculture from 35 percent to 65 percent through clearing in the next four years. Now, and it says that it's going to give priority around river basin areas. Now, if it is not a small thing for you to say you are going to clear land under cultivation from 35% to 65%, which means that you are going to remove people from their traditional areas of business. And what we need to do is, look, like I was telling you, Instead of somebody having 200 cows, tell him that with his five of his cows, he can get an income of 300,000 in a month. So it's not about the size. It of is the not cows. the size because when, when we talk about transformation, it is the production. Now you need to create your own breeds. 
that will give you sufficient milk, that will give you the beef that you require. In the value chain, it's very important because what is the point? These people who are moving all these years, who have supported them? Like, like I give you an example. When there was that drought and there was rain the pairs and they lost everything, it was an opportunity that was open to the government to say, okay, let us all review the livestock production. And see how we can support it. Yes. We, for instance, in the last time the, the, the federal government had a national census of livestock was in 1991. Okay, before you talk about the census, can we take this caller from Bochi uh, in the person of Usman? Usman, welcome to the program and what are your thoughts? Yeah. Yeah, good uh, good evening, uh, Mother Idris uh, Hamza. Thank you. And uh, I also welcome the guests in the studio. Um, on a quick note, um, creating Ministry for Livestock, I think, is a welcome development and it's timely. Um, we hope to see this, the, the, the emergence of this very ministry. And I want to quickly make comment on uh, this very uh, topic or a point you've raised about uh, the issue of, on prior to state. Mm. Actually, what happened there is quite disheartening and is uh, disappointing to some extent. Sincerely speaking, for long I have been following a lot of um, issues, and I realize that uh, those people they claim that uh, they are moving, I think they are they, they, they are full and moving from le uh, different places. I think they are no longer existing. What we have nowadays is a complete nomadic full and and it was a crisis between uh, farmers and uh, herders, and now the support has come. It was only utilized on only one side. I think this is not uh, uh, something that uh, is, 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 is commended from, uh, from, the, from the side of the Plateau State government. Right. And that I think if you, if you can take time to come to Bauchi, you will come and see a number of displayed people as a result of this very crisis. You know, from Bununu, to Intafa Abalewa, and so many other axes. Why should only people you know, those five days will be considered when it comes to the national, you know, uh, support and what have you. I think the, the, the direct idea of the Magbon, they need to stand up and at least voice out in, 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 in respect of what is happening on ground. All right. Um, I think. I'm like, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Usman. Yes, he's emphasizing what you said. And you wanted to give us some figures, statistics at the, uh, you know, cattle in Nigeria, right? Yes, because you see the problem now we now have. Even uh, we need to do, as a matter of emergency, do census. When you do census, you know the number of livestock you have. You will know where the livestock is concentrated. You will know the kind of people that have the livestock. And because you cannot start to transform a system without knowing what you now have. Now, you see, uh, I don't want to double into this plateau because, like, I, I have made my statement mm -hmm. that is, you see, the, the, because it is a government agency or it is the government people that do yeah. the list yeah. of... Yeah, well, the, the wife of the president, we are yet to know whether she was the one who said that this support should go to one side or she only donated it and say, share this equally to people who have been affected. Well, I think she should come out. Let's, I let's, will let's, suggest that, that she know, should come out and should, make a statement. She should clarify. Because there is no need for this hulabalu on, on, on this, because it is apparently injustice for some kind of supposed to come for all victims, and now you decide that it's only one section of the population that should get it, pretending that nothing happened to the other side. Yeah, it's like we have recovered the um, caller from Bochi. Mohammed, welcome to the program once again. So much. So on a quick note, my view on this uh, creation of uh, livestock ministry is a welcome uh, development. But uh, to me, government has to put more effort on uh, putting like uh, research facilities on their institution. Because if you go to a university now and our colleges of agriculture, you see most of the breeds of cows there are commonly local breed and no medication, no any other like uh, uh, people that are good people that are giving good uh, look to the, to the animals. So if government cannot hold its own in, in, in the tertiary institution, I see no way government can uh, uh, go through and start helping people in the villages. All right. No, Thank you very much, Mohammed. You yeah. see, one of the recommendations of the, of the Reform Committee, mm. it advocated for setting up of research institutes 
for milk, for beef, for fodder. I think where you have a whole ministry, then it means that there are possibilities that you can have this, uh, this institute. These are necessary institutes for you to now improve what you now have in, in, in livestock production. You see, um, I don't think up till now, we now have a breed that we can now say, okay, this is the real breed we can now adopt for milk or the one that we can adopt for, for beef. So because, because if you look at the, the kind of budgetary allocation to the whole livestock, it has been so minimal compared to its contribution in the GDP. You know, this is a multi-trillion naira business for God's sake. Hmm. Why are you not investing in it? Multi-trillion naira. Multi-trillion naira business. Okay, we have Mokhtar from Life Camp here in Abuja. Welcome to the program. Hello. Yes, Mukhtar, welcome to the program and go ahead and share your thoughts. Thank you very much. Mm. Thank you so much for it's nice to be it's nice to be a participant for a change. Um, I think it's actually very interesting what um, the, uh, I've forgotten his name really, what he's saying. And um, but from my own perspective, I think we cannot just say that government should have no business in business and in the same breath think that. Um, institutionalizing private businesses actually makes sense. I actually don't think it makes any sense that the government is actually establishing a whole new ministry of livestock. I think it is best that we, we note that the job of government should be in policy making rather than what they are actually doing right now. So um, from my own perspective, I do not think that the government should actually be institutionalizing private businesses. Yes, we know that there's a lot of issues around the livestock sector of the country. And however, what, what do we need to do to change that should be devoid of how government can overhaul the entire system. Government cannot keep overhauling every, system, every single sector we have in the country. Like one of the caller earlier stated that there is a Ministry of Agriculture. Why not expand that ministry or perhaps create an agency that can oversee the creation of policies for private businesses to take over that established system that can actually take over that sector completely. So at least by, because Nigeria is not the only country that has uh, stock farming. So the, the, we have that in the United States, but they have a ranch system. Uh, yes, I know that we cannot keep comparing and contrasting different countries because you have to look at different nuances around what, um, sec, um, what the issues around those particular um, countries. Yeah, I know that, but even at that, we cannot just keep um, repeating the same thing over and over and expecting different results. I think that is madness. So we have to find a way to actually look for creative solutions that allows for private actors to drive it. Because if you ask me now, we're creating a new ministry. I know that part of what the president said was they're going to buy land and a whole lot of that. That buying of land, is it going to be matching fund? Is that going to be, is, who is going to be bringing the money? Where is the money going to be coming from at all? If at all we want, is the bit, are you asking a private uh, actor to pay government for a land that la government already bought, that government already owned? And at what price is it going to go for? So I think policy should be government's business and not actually getting business in itself. All right. That's my own perspective anyway. Thank, Thank you, Mukhtar. Well, Mukhtar, I think Mukhtar is not getting the economies very correct. Okay. Now, if we, if, we, if we are going to look at that argument, now do we now say why should the government invest in airports? Is that not a private business? Why then is government building airports? Why is government... You see, we realize that there is a problem with a particular sector. It has security implications, it has economic implications, it has social implications. Now, let's try to see how we are going to address all these issues holistically. These are, if, for instance, there are particular people who constitute a certain percentage of a Nigerian population who live on these businesses. And the government is not investing anything in their businesses to improve it. Now we can now see, okay, for instance, you just uh, go, to, go, go to Rwanda and you look at the, 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 the way they have improved their milking system, their breed system. Why can't we do it? If you do it, it is not maybe the full animal that is going to make the money. Everybody is going to make the money. Okay, is it that the last administration did not have solid structure that 
the ranching policy, the Ruga could not succeed. No, you see, we, 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 brought, we brought in things that were just simply too political. And they had nothing to do with... When you are talking about ranching, you are talking about big investment. We don't need ranching. All we need to do is just small models, improve the breeds of cows that will give you more milk, improve the pasture, improve the milk, improve, improve the education of those who you think are creating a problem. Now they cannot move. Or because, because you see, the, the, the stock routes have been taken over as, as a result of farms and they cannot move from one end uh, during, the, during the rainy season, they are supposed to move to free range areas, and it's not there. So and now, you, now you now identify it as a problem, then you have to solve it. I think the, the Nigerian government has a responsibility to be fair to all sectors of the economy. Government improves the economy of its citizens by giving incentives. Then we now say, then, then why, why were the uncle borrowers in agriculture? Are we, are we not requiring protein in this country? Who are the producers of most of the protein? So our argument is not, don't let us look at who, is, uh, who are the ones. You need what these institutions so that special attention is paid. Like we are now saying, the research institutes. If you, if you, if you train, if you train uh, veterinary surgeons, who are going to benefit? It's the whole country. Mm. So we don't look at it as if it is like just a, a pri private business that we have. Even in private business, why do you now give, uh, why do you now give incentives? Yes, like the Ankoboro program that you mentioned. Now, w what role can state governors play? Because most of the federal is at the center. You know, but most of the problems, you know, are within the states. And it's like so many of the governors are not forthcoming on addressing this yeah, you see, farmer uh, hire. So even if you have the ministry at the center, unless you have replication. I think uh, the problem we are having as a country is that the quality of leadership we are having at the state and local government is very disappointing. I think these are all issues that could have been handled by the states. For instance, all the baby, uh, the, the registered grazing reserves are in the states. But what is the conditions of the reserves in the, the, well, the, the, the grazing reserves in the states? You see, so long as the states fail to do their own bid, we are a federation. Let the states do the right thing. Look at the budgets of all the states in the northern states. How much do they dedicate to, for livestock? Maybe except for Kano, that is investing a lot in livestock transformation. Give me another state that is investing in livestock. Yeah, I maybe I will try and answer that. Or our next caller will give us answer to, to this question. We have Isa from Toro. That should be your Toro, your hometown. <laughs> Isa, welcome to the program. Thank you very much. All right, go ahead and let's hear your thoughts. Okay, uh, my own uh, contribution regarding this issue is uh, actually I'm uh, very much interested in the topic but uh, to be frank with the present condition of this country actually i can say our leaders are very much interested in creating things but to put them into practice that is where we are finding it very difficult they will try and uh, create the ministry or whatever if we can assess the, 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 the functionality of the present ministries actually it is far 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 below standard for example, the Ministry of Agri that we are having now, look at farmers are always crying respect of fertilizer and other input to the farms. Therefore, actually, it is not about creating the ministry, but what is more important is let our leaders be conscious of the happenings in this country. People are finding it very difficult to be alive, and uh, they, are, they are just saying they'll create this, create that. Let them put what is on ground, let it be practiced, let, let them be dedicated to, to doing what can take us out of the problems we are facing in this country. All right. That is my own thing. Thank you very much, Isa. His, his problem is not creating the ministry, but mm. sustaining him. So maybe we'll no, move to no, the okay. conversation yes. that, uh, assuming the president agrees to, to have the Ministry of Livestock, 
what should be the focus in specific terms whoever is the minister what should he concentrate on well he i i, I think the last talk is all where do we want our livestock to be in this century who is going to be our model don't forget like we were talking about the states what happened to the shonga farm Quara went in and Quara. yes in Quara. nobody's asking that question the imported cows you have a university there that is supposed to work together as a research as a research something there is no way you can develop without investing in research and development for instance there are species that can do very well in plateau it doesn't necessarily mean those species are going to do well in yobi or they are going to do well in sokoto so we need to look at what is it that we want if for instance now we want to be self-sufficient in milk production now then we say that okay these are the breeds that we are going to grow and we are going to grow them together with our universities because our universities are supposed to be research centers so so long as we don't give premium to knowledge to improve our situations then we will continue just to be moving about you know like as if we are a drunken lot of people mm. so it's, it's, it's very important to give premium to knowledge and also to do a lot of research there is no country that develops without research. without research. And we know that the, country, the, the world has moved forward. What is it that we can learn from what those people that have gone through these stages of our development done to improve their lot? All right. We have Gimba Matthew from Kafanchan in Kaduna State. Welcome to the program, Gimba. Thank you very much. I'm okay. very, very interested with this program. Seriously. Okay, please stay away uh, from your so TV set so that we can hear you clearly. Okay, are you hearing me? Yes, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm very, very happy with this year program. The volume of I your TV set that, is uh, causing interference. Yeah, can you please reduce the volume? Okay. Okay, okay. go ahead. Hello, are you hearing yeah. me now? Yes, go ahead. Yeah, yeah I'm saying I'm very, very interested with this year program. Thank you. But my take there is that... Uh, this laptop ministry, uh, ministry, this laptop was only agriculture, isn't it? Yes. And their, and, their, and their performance was very, very slow, very low. So what I want to say there is that uh, the, the laptop, uh, they, they, they should find out what was the problem, why the, the performance was very low. Because actually, the, 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 the issue of creating another ministry, the ministry of last, so it's not the problem. Because this, uh, this Nigeria issue is that they can still create that ministry, but actually, the ministry will not function the way we want it to function. So since this thing was on, the ministry, since this uh, last time was under agriculture, they, they should try to find out why we are, we are the problem, why the ministry was not functioning, why the last talk issue was not functioning very well. They'll find out. And one of the reasons there is that, you know, land, land is a big asset. So when people are increasing, why the land is not increasing? So that is equally a problem. And the issue of autonomy, uh, autonomy, in the local government, why the local government we are not doing autonomy and the state are not they are, they are not doing very well. That is why we are having this problem. I think the state is functioning very well and the local government is functioning very well. That is where we are getting most most of this problem. So that, that I think that problem will be solved. So um, mm. my own take is that they should find out the reason why the the, 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 the livestock was not functioning on the agriculture. Thank when, you. They, when they when they find out the problem, then I think they will start to amend the problem. So all, right. all these things will start from very well. That's my case. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Gimba. It's like he re-anchored what you said earlier, fellow at the state and local government levels. For, for instance, before now, you find that anybody that comes to, or who was posted to Ministry of Agriculture, he was more interested in fertilizer, supply of fertilizer. Now that we are not talking about fertilizer, then you just wonder what is the ministry doing? The, the ministry has a lot of departments. Is it because the federal government has removed subsidy on fertilizer, right? I really that is why I, the, the I, interest I, I is really, not there. I really don't know. I, I don't know how the bureaucracy works in the Ministry of Agriculture. Mm. So I'm in no position to say. But all I know is that if you just, if, if livestock generates 37% of the GDP, if you look at, compare it with the amount of budgetary allocation that is given to that sector, you find that it just does not tally. And this, I, this is a very productive sector. 
So why is it that who is responsible? Why is it that maybe the other department gets more money? And what do they do with the money? You see, all if we look at the whole system in whatever we now do, the monitoring and evaluation becomes a big problem. Will your members agree to be domesticated, for instance? Because there is this allegation that um, quite a number don't really want to be in I, one place. I don't, I don't think so. I don't think so. You see, in domestication, so many people, the domestication is a continuous process. Everybody knows that the reality is you cannot continue to move the way you are moving because uh, the population increase, the population is increasing, and that is why we are now saying change the breeds, introduce new breeds. These people, when they see it, what, nothing stops them from adopting those breeds. They but, need the support. Yeah, but, but, but these are breeds that were for how many years they are the same breed that we are, we are promoting. How can we do that? When we know that in milk, you can, now get, you can now get a cow that can give you 20 liters. Why do you now continue with a cow that will continue to be giving you 2 liters? Okay, it's like we have a message um, on WhatsApp, yes. The, the, the sender said, uh, I think just because we do something in one sector doesn't make it okay in every sector. The airport analogy makes sense, but I don't think it is okay that the government should keep investing in airports. It should be a private affair. Government's interventions in these matters should have statutes of limitations and scope of time. It should not be endless. In addition, in terms of the government doing anything in terms of helping the economy, it should grant tax moratoriums, maybe, but not overhaul the system completely. Do you agree with him? Well, he, uh, this appears to be the Mukhtar that uh, called yes, but, 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 but as far as I am concerned, the world over, every sector gets that level of subsidy. Well, then why did the Americans will pay for the farmers not to plant? Not to plant? Not to plant. Why? Yeah, because, because they don't want to flood the market with, with maybe particular products. Why is it that in some countries they, they, they throw away the milk so that they, they don't depress the market for the milk? So every country does what it is. So, you know, we are in a unique problem. We, we now identify that there is a problem that we want to solve. Maybe you How are much? telling Mukhtar that, okay, your government can do the intervention. Maybe after Absolutely. 16, no, no. 20 years, it can disband the ministry. No, if all but, things, but, but, you know, but, get shaped. But if the government giving these people money for, even if they are going, they are only going to give you a loan. And no, the government has not even said that it's going to give a loan. What we are now saying is that help establish research institutes that can improve what we now have. This is, these are all the kind of things we are looking for. Nobody is looking for, uh, uh, nobody is looking for government to give them money. No. Improve the existing facilities. Improve the infrastructure so that we can move forward. Okay, now what is your final take or advice to the federal government and then the state governments. They are, they are just 100 days <laughs> in office. No, I, I think the whole government policy, the whole government policy on agriculture of improving food production, you see there is a symbiotic relationship between the agronomy and livestock. The products of uh, agri agriculture uh, is very important for somebody who is, look, for somebody who is a farmer, you can, you can give the corn stock to the man who is doing livestock. Mm. But you see, uh, unfortunately over the years, it is the lack of, you see, the lack of quality of governance that got us to where we are. If there has been proper governance at the local government level at the state level, I don't think there is need for us to go into all this crisis. Mm. The mandates of the local government, the mandates of the states, and the mandates of the federal government are clearly defined. But un unfortunately, if you go to the states, most of them are more interested in just constructing roads. But from what are they doing? They should go beyond. Now, and if somebody tells you before, before now, they will tell you, ah, they will, they will list the distribution of fertilizer as one of their greatest achievements. Anybody can not. distribute fertilizer. All right. We are not improving anything. Mm. So the problem lies in the way we are governed at the states. The leadership at the states and the local government levels must be improved. Just at the same time at the federal. All because right. if, for instance, we can continue to... to uh, uh, 
what is the new variety? What is our export? Why is it that our exports are being rejected and what have you? So it, we just have to look at the whole, the way we managed our things. So that to get it right. To get it right. Thank you very much, Adamu Lawatoro, Director of Strategic Planning, Meti Allah Cattle Breeders Association of Nigeria, Magba, for coming to the program and for answering some of the vital questions raised by our callers. We have to have you again. Thank you very much. All right. And viewers, that's a wrap on today's package. We sincerely hope you found the conversation engaging and informative. And be sure to join Daily Politics Live airing every weekday and also our special package on Friday, during which we open our telephone line for you to comment on national issues as we did today. Once again, we thank you for watching. Bye-bye. I'm Hamza Idris.